this year's Bendy Cup winners. Helen Phillips from the School Nutrition Association tells us all about school lunch. And what does value really mean for shoppers? For October 5th, 2011, this is Food News Today. Good morning. We're now streaming on our Facebook page, Supermarket Guru, and on foodnewstoday.com. Also, if you haven't done so already, please be sure to go to the iTunes store and download Smarter Shopping, our free app. And did I mention? It's free. Food News Today is sponsored by ConAgra Foods, who shares with me the desire to provide the most current, interesting, and unbiased food news. Representing the best of the tri-state area, not tri-tip, but tri-state area, food truck vendors and eaters gathered a week ago Saturday on Governor's Island in New York to compete for the ultimate food truck honor, the Vendi Cup. Now, we've talked a lot before about the importance of the food truck phenomenon. Perhaps it's the ultimate source for new food talent, and supermarkets should be scouring the streets to not only identify the latest in food trends, but also to identify new talent to bring in store. The Vendi Awards are New York City's premier street food showcase and an intense cook-off between the best sidewalk chefs. The Vendi Cup winner was Solber Papusas, a truck that serves papusas, which some claim is the most authentic and traditional food from El Salvador. Grilled corn masa patties, hand-shaped and stuffed with cheese and other various fillings. The People's Taste Award, selected by the hundreds who attended and tasted their way from finalists in each award category, went to Suvlaki GR an authentic Greek food truck that claims to be the best and the freshest Greek food in New York City. Now, the Rookie of the Year went to Carilla Barbecue, a truck that serves up Korean barbecue in burritos, tacos, or in a bowl. The winner in the dessert category was Woolies, a healthy fruit snow ice accompanied with a variety of toppings, including fresh seasonal fruits and sumptuous syrups. A new national survey shows that students in school this year will find more fresh fruits and vegetables, more whole grain options, and more locally grown foods in in their cafeterias. The majority, 69.5% of school food service directors, say that implementing new nutrition standards is the most pressing issue facing their programs. That, according to a recent report from the School Nutrition Association. Earlier in the week, I talked with Helen Phillips, the president of the School Nutrition Association, about the current state of school nutrition. Now, between the passage of the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act and the release of proposed new nutrition standards for school meals, school cafeterias are seeing some big changes. What's on the cafeteria menus for this school year? An exciting thing that we're seeing this school year, as in some recent years, is lots more fresh fruits and vegetables being offered to students across the country. Uh, the School Nutrition Association recently conducted a national survey which indicated that nearly every school across the country is offering fresh fruits and vegetables to the students. You'll also see more whole grains, lower fat foods, and foods with lower sodium. Now, no question that school food service budgets are pretty tight. How are schools managing to make these changes? The school budgets are tight and school nutrition programs are charged with running a program that can pay its own way throughout the school district without taking funds from the school district. So it is a challenge for us to manage nutrition integrity as well as the bottom line. And what you have to do is to just look for foods that are maybe in season when you're talking about your fresh fruits and vegetables. You can get them at a lower price when they're the things that are in season maybe in your area or just at least in this country. And then also you have to taste test with kids so that they don't waste the food that they take and put on their plate. Now let's look at the bigger picture outside of schools. Many kids establish their eating habits at home. How can parents encourage their kids to make healthy choices when they enter the cafeteria? Parents play a huge role in the students making healthy choices when they come to eat at school. Parents at home should be offering a variety of fresh fruits and vegetables that they help to introduce those things at home. Then when the kids get to school, it's not a new item to them. Um, sometimes we're introducing new things at school and the kids take it home and introduce their parents to it. But the parents do play a key role in talking about nutrition at home and in role modeling what they do at home so that when the kids come to school, they make healthy choices with us as well.
Now, research is showing that kids aren't getting enough fruits and vegetables for a healthy diet. How are schools working to get more fresh produce into school meals? Well, everyone eats with their eyes, and certainly the fresh fruits and vegetables are beautiful and they're eye appealing. And I know in my school district, we are offering almost everything now is fresh. We do fresh, raw vegetables and fruits as side dishes. We also this year are doing new fresh cut steamed vegetables. They hold their color better than when they're canned, um, so they look better for the children. They will tend to select them better. Another thing I'm doing in my district is some of the fresh items I offer are prepackaged. So perhaps a child doesn't want to eat it right away, they can stick something in their backpack for a snack later. And here's the $64,000 question. Are the kids actually eating all this fresh produce? I believe that they are. Because we offer them options and choices, it's not forced upon them. So they can choose what they like, they choose what looks good to them. They may need to have the same thing offered more than once because maybe their best friend tried it, but they didn't try it the first time it was offered. And so the next time, then that child may choose it and find that they like it. It takes more than one try to find out that you like something. So they may try it one time and eat half of it and the next time eat it all up. Now tell me about the National School Lunch Week campaign. What's that all about? National School Lunch Week is October 10th to 14th, and our theme this year is Let's Grow Healthy. And the idea behind that is to let students know where their food comes from. Lots of school districts across the country are doing locally sourced fruits and vegetables, and this helps the children to understand that the food all comes from the ground. It all comes from a farmer, and then it eventually ends up on their plate. And so we really love the theme. It's let's grow healthy to get to know your food, and also let's grow healthy just to eat healthy and be healthy. Thanks, Helen. In last week's edition of Supermarket News, one of the articles reported on the findings from the Supermarket News and Supermarket Guru Consumer Panel Survey on how consumers view value and their means of achieving it compared to how the industry thinks consumers react to value. The Value Shopper Survey illustrates the view from the supply side and how it's not always in sync with that of the consumer or retailer, what consumers say and what the industry thinks about the importance of value can vary, sometimes to large degrees. Most food shoppers consider themselves value shoppers, but with the recession, price became a primary qualifier of value for a lot of food shoppers. Retailers and manufacturers responded with deep discount offers to help retain sales as consumers cut the amount in their shopping baskets. The report goes on to say that in the post-recession era, value is a moving target. It means different things to different types of shoppers. Price is not often the primary qualifier, even as economic uncertainties continue to add pressure to consumer spending. The challenge for food retailers and the industry at large is to understand what value means to different food shoppers that will result in purchases and store loyalty, and then target offers to appeal to consumers' different sense of value. For the complete report, just log on to supermarketnews.com. For Food News Today, I'm Phil Lemper. Thanks for joining us.